Are you struggling to edit in DaVinci Resolve and you're about to pull the plug on a brand new computer? If so, try this first because it could just save you a ton of money. For now anyway. Alright guys, now I hope you're all good. So is DaVinci Resolve skipping frames and editing is becoming a bit of a nightmare? Well if so, here are 7 things that you can try to hopefully bring you back up to speed before you have to do the inevitable, which is buy a new computer, which we don't want to do. Not now anyway. So hopefully this will buy you a little bit more time. Let's go. Now you can choose to do just one of these, a combination of a few, or you can do all of them. It's entirely up to you. None of them rely on each other, so you can do whatever is best for your workflow. So with that being said, let's start with the easiest and also my favorite, which is playback resolution, which does exactly what it says on the tin. And that is change the resolution that is in your preview window display. So to change this, you just head up to playback in the menu bar, then scroll down to timeline playback resolution. And by default, this will be set to full. And now you have the option to change it to either half or a quarter. This is going to play back your project in the preview window at a reduced quality to make scrubbing through your footage much quicker and much easier on your computer. Boom. Done. Now I pretty much have this set to a quarter the entire time for every single project, up until I need to do a bit of colour grading, then I put it back to full, then I switch it back to a quarter. However, if you're still struggling, even at a quarter resolution, even I do as well, you can try this next one too, which is edit in 1080p instead of 4K. So obviously if you're going to be editing in 4K and you're going to set that timeline preview resolution down by about a quarter, then that's essentially like editing in 1080p. At least I think so, don't quote me on that. However, if you actually edit your 4K footage in a 1080p timeline to begin with, then that preview window resolution is going to be reduced even further, which means that it's going to be even easier on your computer. And to do this, you just right click on your timeline in the media pool and choose timelines and then timeline settings. Now in the format tab, scroll to where it says timeline resolution and change this from 4K to 1080p if you've already started your project. Make sure that mismatch resolution is set to scale entire image to fit, press OK, and that's it. You're all set. You've now got a much more manageable 1080p timeline to edit from. Just don't forget to put it back to 4K before you export. Now the next one might be the case for a lot of you, including myself, and that's when you start putting colour grades and effects in your timeline. Your computer just decides to say, no, I'm not working anymore. Well, the good news is you can actually turn these off temporarily so that your computer doesn't have to fight through all of that extra hard work. And then you can just continue editing as if they're not even there. And to do this, we just go up here and next to these three little dots above the timeline previewer, we have what looks like a little multicolored planet of some sort. Basically just toggle this on and off. This will bypass all the colour grading and fusion effects that you have on your timeline, making it much easier for you to edit your footage. Now don't worry, this isn't permanent. It's just going to disable these effects until you turn it back on again. So if you're a bit like me and you do multiple passes of a project, then all these effects and all these colour grades are just going to get in the way and they're just going to slow you down. So this is a very handy switch indeed. Now I do wish that they had a separate switch for your colour grades and a separate switch for the effects, but they don't, it's just in the one button. So for now, a little hack is to actually put all of your effects onto one or two tracks and then just disable those tracks when you don't need them and then just remember to enable them before you export. A little hack. And number four is to enable render caching. Now this essentially pre-renders certain parts of your timeline so that DaVinci Resolve doesn't have to keep processing these every time you're scrubbing through or editing your footage. So to do this, if we just head up to playback, go to render cache and choose smart. Smart will allow DaVinci Resolve to pick and choose the parts to render, which works quite well for my testing. However, if you do go back and alter any of these sections, then DaVinci is just going to have to re-render those parts out again, which can be a little bit time consuming. But for those very complex sections that you have in your timeline, it is a great way to make everything run a little bit smoother. Alternatively, if you do want a little bit more control, then you can actually set this to user and then you can right click on a layer individually and turn on the render cache from there. And to see if it's all worked, you should now see a red or a blue line above your timeline. If it's in blue, it means it's been rendered. And if it's in red, it means it's just awaiting to be processed. This does, however, take up additional storage on your computer. So once you've finished your project, you're going to want to make sure that you delete all the render cache. And you do this by going up to playback, delete render cache, and then all. 
So it's very similar to how Final Cut Pro works with its white little dots above their timeline. So if you're familiar with that, then hopefully this makes sense. Or if you're not, then hopefully I've made sense. <laughs> And then similar to render caching, we have number five, which is render in place. Now this is for those sections of the project that you feel are not gonna change, but they have a lot of effects and a lot of color grades, and they're just continually slowing your project down. You can actually choose to render these out a little bit more permanently so that DaVinci doesn't have to think about them again. And to do this, all you need to do is right click on the layer and choose render in place. This now creates an external video file of that particular clip making it much easier for DaVinci Resolve to process. Or if you have a section that's made up of a lot of layers, then all you need to do is select all the layers, right click, turn them into a compound clip, and then select the compound clip, right click, and render that in place as well. This does exactly the same thing, creates an external video file, so that DaVinci Resolve no longer has to think about that particular part of your project. Easy. So this is ideal for those more complex sections of your project that you don't think are going to change later down the line. However, if you do actually want to alter them later, don't worry, you're not stuck. All you need to do is right click on the clip and then press decompose to original, which is just gonna set it back to its original format. And number six is create proxy files, which is pretty easy to do in DaVinci Resolve. And from my understanding, there's a couple of ways you can do it. There might be more. And the first way is to right click on your footage in the media pool, go to proxy media and choose generate proxy media. And then choose the folder that you want to store them, press OK, and then you just got to wait for them to generate. And if you're still having issues with your proxies, it may be that you need to change the proxy settings in your project settings. So you do this by opening your project settings and then in the master settings, scroll down to where it says optimize media and render cache. And the first drop down menu says proxy media resolution and by default, DaVinci will set this to choose automatically. So you may just wanna play about with this and choose one that offers the best compromise between image quality and performance for your needs. Now the second way and my preferred way of creating proxies is to use the external program that comes with DaVinci Resolve called Blackmagic Proxy Generator. So if we open up the Blackmagic Proxy Generator and like we had in DaVinci Resolve, we've got a few quality options that we can choose from, but this time it's just a lot easier to understand. So I just use the top one, which is actually the worst quality, but for me, that works perfectly fine and makes editing a lot easier on my 2019 iMac. Then in the watch folders area, you can choose to where you want to create your proxies from. So start by clicking add, then navigate to the folder your footage is stored in, press open, and then simply press start. It will automatically create a subfolder called proxy in the same location as your original footage and begin generating your proxies. Now this can take a while, however, the beauty about this is it's an external program to DaVinci Resolve. So you can continue to edit in DaVinci while these proxies are being generated in the background. And DaVinci knows exactly where these are because we've created that subfolder in the same folder as your original footage. All you need to do is tell DaVinci Resolve to use them. And the way you turn these on is really easy. All you need to do is click on the little drop down above your timeline previewer and choose prefer proxies. Now the timeline will replace the original footage with all these low resolution copies, making it much easier for you to edit with. And to tell which ones have actually had proxies made, you do this by going into the media pool and then next to the media footage itself, you should see a little pink proxy icon over the top. If you don't see this, then either the generator is still processing that particular clip or you haven't actually asked it to create a proxy for that file in that folder. So make sure that you link in all the folders that you require. So now you can edit using these much easier to process files. All you need to do is remember to switch it back to prefer camera originals before you export your project. Otherwise you'll be exporting a low quality video, which nobody wants. And number seven is to edit from an SSD, which is pretty standard these days, but SSDs have a much faster and quicker read and write speed than your older HDD drives do. So it just allows the computer to access and decode your footage a lot quicker and a lot smoother. So for the best results, you can either use your internal SSD on your computer, or you can use one of the external SSDs that you can buy from like SanDisk or Samsung, which I have quite a lot of, and uh, I really should upgrade to a NAS because I've got no form of backup. I've just got like 15 of these external hard drives, which is a bit of a nightmare. I really should start upgrading into a NAS system, but 
so expensive and I can't really afford it. So uh, like and subscribe <laughs> or sponsor me. Come on, Synology. I, you know, I could, I could do a review, please. So there you have it. Seven things for you to try to hopefully make editing a much smoother process before you have to do the inevitable, which is um, spend thousands of pounds on a new computer because with AI, that's the way it's heading. A lot quicker for most people, which is very annoying. I'm just hoping this buys you a little bit more time because the computer that you would have to buy now is not going to be as good as a computer that you can buy in six months or even 12 months time. So I'm pretty much doing all of these things and I'm hoping I can hold out for another six to 12 months. Who knows? So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. Hit the bell, all those nice things that will put a smile on my face. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I know, I know, you heard a little something about me, right? People love to talk, everybody wanna tell me, right? I know, I know, bunch of fakes all around me.